And good morning, everyone, or good afternoon to some of you out there. Uh, welcome to another Full Compass Full Access webinar here, where we bring you subjects that you've asked for, and we pick the industry experts to cover those subjects. So uh, my name is Jim Rip. Let me pull up my camera here. You can get a look at me. I, yes, I look exactly like that picture. I'm here at Full Compass Live. Uh, today we have Jeremy Morris with uh, New Tech to show us the TriCaster Mini and talk about NDI. So a very uh, uh, hot topic lately with uh, with all of the remote videos that everybody has to do. So uh, a few things before we get started here. Uh, we have uh, a question feature. There, th this is we're going to try and pack all this information within an hour. The, Jeremy says he could talk a lot longer on this thing, but by all means, type in your questions. Uh, I will ask those to Jeremy when we get to near the end here of the, the session. If you have to duck out, no worries. We have a recording of it uh, that'll be available for you. Uh, we will also put it up on our YouTube channel, on LinkedIn, and several other places for you to check that out in the future. Uh, also, we have a short survey, and this is where, in this survey, this is where you pick uh, the subject that you, you, that you think would be important that you want to hear about, and we'll uh, then put that on the docket for some uh, webinars coming up. So let me see here. Let's bring up, without further ado, Jeremy here. All right, Jeremy, I think your audio is live. Your camera should be coming up a second. There he is. Welcome. Hi, Jim. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, checking out your your resume here. Uh, born and raised a Hoosier. Wow. Oh, yeah. I, all I have to say for that is go Badgers. Well, <laughs> I'm with the Butler, so it's all right. Um, so, yeah, so I'm born and raised in Indiana, and I've been out here in the uh, D.C. market for the last 14 years. But I've been in the dealer integration world for 18. I've been with New Tech now since November, but born and raised on TriCaster, on New Tech, on everything since high school. Um, so it's been a, a great company, great opportunity to work, and uh, I, I love the stuff, and I love talking about it. Well, it, it's great to have you with us today, uh, and I'm sure I'm going to let you dig into it because I know there's a lot to cover here. So uh, I'm going to shoot over the presentership to you. I will duck out with my camera and, and audio here, and I will see you at the end of the presentation. All right, sounds good. So I'll go ahead and share my screen so you can see me full screen. So today we're talking about the mini 4K product. Now this was originally released into last year. We kind of had a refresh on the hardware um, a few months ago. So we've made some updates, made some changes, but the overall idea and process of the box still is alive and well, and that it is a production switcher that's built around NDI. And for those that don't understand or fully understand what NDI is, uh, NDI is Network Device Interface. It's our own protocol with transport of video across a network. Now, that seems kind of vague, and, and people are very familiar with AV over IP or SMPTE 2110 or Dante for audio or things like that. It fits in well across all of those. In fact, it is similar to how Dante operates on a local network and that devices can see each other. You can transmit and receive signals. So a source or a device in general can be both a source and a destination at the same time. Um, everything that I'll be doing here today will be running via the NDI protocol from cameras to the production switcher to the monitors to the control. Everything will be NDI based. So to talk about the workflow on the mini 4K product itself, uh, I've got a few slides here I want to show that kind of illustrate that a little bit better. And we've got things surrounding a network switch. We do have our own NDI PTZ cameras. Those are running an HX protocol. So you can have direct connect between the cameras and the TriCaster itself. So in this regard, we're going through a network switch. We're also interfacing with our Spark IO modules. Now in the bundle with the Mini 4K, you do get two of our Spark IO modules. These are little converters that connect up via network that are PoE. So if the PoE switch or the TriCaster itself on the Mini 
uh, you can directly connect the cable. Now you have HDMI in or out, so it can be an encoder or a decoder, not simultaneous, it's either or. So if you've got existing ENG cameras or even a DSLR that's coming out HDMI, you can send that into the Spark modules. It can be seen on the network as video sources inside the TriCaster. So a couple other options uh, that we talk about is we can bundle with a larger control surface for PTZ control of the cameras. Um, like I said, with the decoders or with the Sparks in decode mode, now you can send an NDI source back to a monitor or to a projector for overflow purposes. Um, this is very popular in the house of worship market right now because you get two encoders included with the box. You may not need the encoders. So what are you going to do with these boxes left over? Okay, well, now I can put them in decode mode. So now I have ability to send something to uh, an overflow room or to a multi-purpose room, worship hall, things like that, to send that signal from the sanctuary to another part of the building. So it's a great little box, and it's included in the bundle. Or extra monitors for on stage, uh, monitors for on set, confidence monitors. There's a lot of different options you can use with our little Spark I.O. modules. Um, they're very, very cool. So this is when you're dealing with computers and network video sources via a computer or whatnot that's on an existing network. But it, Box is also designed to be direct connect in a lot of mobile environments. So you can directly connect the cameras straight to the chassis with an Ethernet cable. Same with the Spark IOs. And then now you can interface with a router for additional video sources with a laptop, our iPhone app, uh, which I'll show you here in a minute. And then our little control surface connects that via USB. Now, people are asking about the audio sources as well. Well, we do have analog inputs directly on the front of the box. So you can take a stereo mix off of your regular uh, audio mixer uh, as an analog input into the TriCaster, or it will support embedded audio over an NDI stream. So our cameras actually have a stereo mini jack on the back of the camera. So you can connect up an audio device or a microphone. Um, it does not provide phantom power. So it's either mic level or line level directly into the camera so that will embed that audio at the camera source and send that back over NDI. Uh, so in, in some remote environments where you may not have the ability for extra cabling or operators or things like that, it's a very nice way to send all your sources and all your signals uh, down one pipe. When we talk about the Spark IO box itself, so this is the HDMI version. We also have an HDSDI version. So if you want something with the BNC, we can handle that as well. So we have the HDMI in, so the, off the cameras can go to the input jack, and then that will then spit the NDI out onto the network. Or if it's set up in decode mode, then you can see whatever's NDI coming back out that HDMI to a display or projector. Now, we do have a little jack on the box. This is to embed audio only. So it will not decode. It will not break out analog audio for a decode. But on the embed, it will work that way. So you can encode laptop audio sources, things like that, with that jack and then that will then create the audio with the video onto the network and we talked about okay how do you directly connect to the box itself there's a little slide that i came up with that shows the onboard ports for direct connect this is not an onboard switch this is a four port gigabit card that lives in the chassis itself so you can't and it does have poe associated with it but the PoE budget is not large, so you do have enough power to control two cameras safely. So that's full PTZ, that's full video, full everything, um, and the NDI source all on one Cat6 cable between the camera and the chassis. And then you also have enough headroom with the power budget to then power two Spark I.O. modules as well. You can plug in a third camera, but you will not have control. You'll just have video uh, because it will not have enough power to control uh, three cameras at a time and then the control surface this is the mini cs that will connect up via usb uh, you have two other onboard gigabit NICs. this is for regular ethernet traffic so that you can hook up a laptop that way or to a network switch that can then host a router uh, for internet for streaming or if you want to connect up and use our iphone apps uh, for camera sources this would kind of be the way that you would deal with that we do have four of these mini display port connectors on the chassis. These mini display port connectors are for your multi-view interfaces. So this is your normal uh, production within the TriCaster environment where you would have your interface for control and then your multi-view for additional camera sources. You can connect up another 4K monitor because we are running in true 4K now. Off this mini display port, you can add a third display that would be 
a 4K monitor for full that 4K output on video. So that is supported, that does work very, very well. We do include the dongles in the box. So we have mini display port that break out to full size display port and to HDMI. Those are included in the kit, so that way you can connect up your, your various displays and be able to output those video signals. So the last slide to talk about is just showing the larger, uh, what's actually, this is the TC small panel um, that's included with the TC1. Um, so this small panel that connects up via USB is also great uh, in this package because then you have the joystick for camera control, you've got macro features, all the MEs, uh, all that will still work uh, very, very well with the TC Mini 4K. We have a special bundle that does include this panel as well as two of our PTZ1 cameras. So these are our HD NDI cameras, two Sparks and the chassis. So it's a very great way to start off your production. Everything comes in one quit, one kit, sorry. Um, and it, it's just ease of operation. Plug in your cameras, you're off and running. So that's just some brief overview of connectivity, what it looks like, things like that. And for now, I'm actually gonna start showing you guys what the interface looks like. And we'll do a little walk around the sun, if you wanna call it that, and see how things operate inside the TriCaster environment. So when we talk about our input selection, up at the top, we have ways to bring in this external sources. So right now I'm coming in over our NDI UHD camera. So this is a 4K camera that's spitting out NDI into the TriCaster over a network. So I'm not using any baseband video connectors. Everything is on NDI, everything is network-based. We have eight inputs that you can mix and match your video sources. Now you're not limited to only eight because you're, we're leveraging everything NDI. So if I open up my menu, on the input side for my drop down menu, you'll see everything listed that's possible that's on my network. So that's additional cameras, that's additional boxes. Here's my iPhone. So I can bring in my iPhone camera as a source. Uh, other devices, um, an NC1IO. So this is an, an expansion module that can take in HDSDI signals, spit them into NDI and put them on the network. Or other TriCasters, you can mix and match. If you've got schools that are on the same network and you want to share content that way, you can have, I can actually talk about this because I have a couple of clients here in the Mid-Atlantic region that are doing that. It's two schools on the same network. Basically, it's the same campus. Uh, one's a middle school, one's an elementary school. And they're doing productions and they're sharing camera sources back and forth between each other. Or they're doing a joint show where you're interviewing one principal and talking to another teacher, but it's all on the same network. It's two TriCasters that can see each other and then that way they can share content and basically have one larger show based on the number of NDI sources that are on the network. PTZ control, I have the ability to handle presets, uh, especially like here with uh, my shot here with camera two. Uh, I've got different presets saved. So you can see, you know, this is an example of where things are at and I can spin cameras around. So here's actually me at my desk. If you can see up here in the top in the camera two, uh, or I can spin it back around and actually show you that that's the mini itself on the other side of the room but i can control the ptz camera from inside the interface itself so with the the tc1 sp that larger panel with the joystick you can actually use that joystick to move your cameras around save your presets and then recall them from the panel itself uh, other options would be computer sources uh like here with scan converter this is taking the output of my laptop as a source over the network. So no need for additional scalar boxes or converters. I'm just running my NDI tool app set. So I'm using NDI scan converter to bring in my laptop source as an input into the TriCaster. So that's one way of handling sources. This can also be for graphics uh, programs that are running on external computers that can then spit out NDI like uh, the Adobe Creative Suite has NDI plugins for that. So you can bring in graphics from the Adobe uh, class over. Um, there's also other third-party uh, software apps out there that support NDI. So you can use those for graphics. Um, we do have two channels of Skype TX built into the chassis. Now this is a slightly different version of Skype than what the desktop application is. Skype TX was originally designed for the broadcasters, sort of a way to supplant uh, satellite uplinks. So Skype TX is a direct one-line or one-way communication between someone on the far end and the TriCaster itself. 
So you do have full audio and video control of that far end caller as independent sources, where if you're dealing with collaboration software account, even just with this GoToMeeting channel, or with reg regular Skype or BlueJeans, GoToMeeting, Zoom, all those other applications is a joint call. Everyone's calling into one kind of party line mix where Skype TX is an individual channel of both audio and video. So this does present some very interesting workflow scenarios with people doing everything remotely where you might have your host in one location, your guest in another location, and the TD is in a third location to bring all those signals together and control. So this is one way to do it, where you can have your guest call in, or even your host, and they're using their traditional Skype account, and they're calling into the Skype TX controller software that lives on another Windows PC. Um, and we can go down that rabbit hole at another time, or you can schedule demos with us at New Tech to fully flush out um, that Skype workflow and how to handle those uh, those remote callers. But just gives you that option that I can bring them in natively into the TriCaster. I don't have to have a separate laptop uh, to manage callers. As far as media players go, we do have two DDRs built in and graphics tabs, similar to all of our products in the past. So with our DDRs, we do have full motion video and audio for playback. So you can have green screens for hosts. Um, you can have regular video playback, regular content doesn't really matter. I mean, these are 4K videos that I shot on my iPhone and brought them into a session. Uh, so you're very friendly with video content. You're not forced to only one type and one resolution of video files. We can mix and match. We play well with others. It's just when you import them in, you have to transcode them appropriately so they play back without any errors. So that can be uh, regular MPEG or you know, MP4s or things like that. Uh, various video formats uh, can ingest quite well. And as far as graphics go, yes, I brought in PowerPoint slides as full screen graphics. We can handle lower thirds in our graphics slides as well. So our graphics tabs are mainly stills and titles. The DDRs are primarily for video content and playback. But in playlist mode, you can mix and match. So if you're dealing with you know, spot reels is a good one for uh, local sports where you're doing halftime breaks or in between shows or whatever, you want to run back your ads. Some of those might have video. Some of them might just be full screen stills. In that sense, you can layer them up in one playlist. So you can transition between a full motion video and a full screen slide at the same time, add your effects between and play them back in a timeline. It works out very, very well. We also have an internal audio mixer. So the audio mixer is nice in that it can handle pretty much whatever you want as far as inputs and outputs. So your input sources can come in, you can manage them appropriately. Um, you see here are our Skype channels that come in, and it, you see the little Skype logo associated with those Skype callers. This is setting up an automatic mix minus inside the software, so you don't have to worry and manage that yourself. It's doing it automatically. And then from our other input sources, this can pretty much be whatever you want them to show up as. So we do have those line level inputs. Um, that are on the box. We have a microphone jack as well. Um, again, that's mic level. It's not phantom power. Um, older products that we had uh, had phantom power from mics. We don't have that anymore. So everything is just either mic level or line level. Um, but you can pick and choose whatever the sources that you want to be your audio signals coming in. So you can manage them that way. We do have a uh, full graphic EQ that's built into the, to each input, a compressor limiter, a noise gate. Triggers is a very cool way to be able to create basically like a ducker effect. Or based on a macro, you've triggered an event to happen. So you can either do uh, squeeze backs and run playback audio or some other type of way, but you can trigger audio levels uh, based on macros. As far as routing goes, we do have a master and an aux channel. That's stereo, so you can't create a mix minus if you need to, or an additional aux channel if you have to send audio out a separate output. And then from a supplemental audio device, here's some additional rerouting. And you've noticed we do have Dante support. So I can run Dante virtual sound card on our TriCaster product line. So now I can leverage 16 channels of audio in and out in my Dante environment. So that's also a very nice way to handle additional mix minuses or additional routing or in a live event space where you might have someone at front of house that has to manage and route all of the audio sources, even on playback. This is a way that you can do that. So even on my DDRs, I can then assign that to a Dante virtual transmit channel that can be sent back to front of house. 
they can then ride that level in a corporate boardroom environment or some other type where they have to manage audio externally. So they can handle it that way, bring it back in. I have my mix minus channel here on my aux, so that way I don't get feedback through the TriCaster or the double video or double audio sound. Um, so you do have a lot of ways uh, you can mix and handle audio as well. And yeah, that graphic or that EQ compressor limiter also applies to our outputs, which is also unique uh, to our product line is you can EQ the outs separately from the inputs if necessary. So that's a lot of uh, a lot of cool uh, things for people to they like to play with. As far as our output goes, we do have our preview program windows. So you can see what's going on as you're switching. Uh, up at the top, you'll see different elements, the grab, the record, the stream. Grab means I'm gonna take a snapshot of whatever's going on in the program and basically create a full resolution JPEG image. So think of social media publishing. If you wanna see what's going on on your show and then send that out to social media to say, hey, click, you know, here's what we're doing, click here to watch live. You can give a still image that way. Um, schools love this for yearbook photos. It's very easy to show. Here's our morning announcement team. Here's what's been going on. I click the grab. Now I've got a snapshot that I can send off uh, for yearbook, things like that. As far as the clock goes, we do have support for time code via LTC. So that can come in via one of the audio channels. So if you want to bring in even over DBS receive or line at level input, so that's a way to bring in LTC. Uh, you do have an indicate event time, so start and stop. So if you have want to do a countdown or count up, uh, you can set that up depending on how you run your shows uh, in a live environment or if you have to time or cue people a certain way. On the record side, uh, we have the ability to do replay in the box. So this is kind of rudimentary. It, it works as it's designed. <laughs> it's not a full-on three play. Uh, for replay, um, but yes, it will back up in increments of three, five, eight, or 10 seconds. So that way you can build clips, it'll populate into a DDR, and that way you can have a, a somewhat simplified version of replay native to your production switcher. Um, but also as far as full on recording in the system itself, we do have internal hard drives for recording, or you can connect up external devices. So this will send set up, okay, whatever my mix is. So we have, our outputs are treated as mixes. We have mix one, two, three, four. And then we can configure that in our output. So whatever mix one is, so right now I have mix one set up as program. Mix two, I have set up as preview, and I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, mix three, I'm assigning a double box over an ME. And then mix four is actually how I'm sending my signal to you guys with my webcam. I have everything run through the TriCaster first before I send it back out to go to meeting. And I'll explain that a little bit later, uh, how NDI tools works that that but on the record side i'm setting up my file name the record path which drive is it going to if it's going to an internal drive or going to an external drive i map that accordingly i have my automatic gain control so that masters my audio recording uh, and then comment section if i want to handle that um, so if my editors know hey what in the world did we record i can give commentary to that aspect I can check this box for instant replay now that this record channel will be part of my replay path, but I can assign that independently if I want to. So that's internal to the box is those four channels of recording. On our streaming encoder side, we have two independent streaming encoders built into the platform. Now this means I can set up a completely different stream on one channel than another. So if I wanna send something live to Facebook, that's fine. I can create my own resolution codec and bit rate and send that out to one location and send a completely separate one out to YouTube at the same time. And I can also start and stop these streams independently of each other. So if I wanna start Facebook and just run that now and forever, but YouTube, I wanna keep certain, especially in a corporate environment where the entire corporate meeting is being broadcast on Facebook, no big deal, it's just a wide shot that's fine, but when the keynote speaker's time is up, then I can start YouTube independently and it's just the keynote speaker is being sent to YouTube. I can handle it that way. So I'm just logging in to the various account, manage it that way, I'm selecting the event, and then once I go live, I'm going live. The other really cool part about our streaming encoders is we do have a file capture option. So this means I'm going to record an MP4 in those streaming settings that I set up ahead of time 
So that will be a backup, basically. If something were to happen, if you know YouTube goes down or if the network interference, if there's an issue, you always have the MP4 that you can upload after the fact. So it is a very nice, you know, get out of jail free card CYA moment that we like to talk about in video. So that way we are protected. We've got an MP4. So this MP4 is actually totally different than our master recording that we've done over here. So the MP4 was done in the streaming encoder settings that we set up. So you want to make sure if you're dealing with it for backup purposes or for export purposes that things match the way you want to. Uh, on source setup, I can have independent sources going out my streams. So I can, can I can send completely different video to completely different streaming CDNs at the same time. Now, why in the world would you want to do that? Uh, there are houses of worship that have multilingual services. So they're sending out to two completely separate websites, potentially. So that way, that's being handled. Um, and I'm getting pop-up messages. Sorry about that. Uh, going to end. So that way we can handle different streams going. Uh, also, a way to monetize your stream. Uh, there's some people here in the DC market that do live events all around town. And there are times where they're sending out a wide shot of kind of like breaking the fourth wall. It's a, it's a high overview of the entire production. So you see the host and the guests and all the cameras and everything. That's being fed out on the free Facebook site with a tagline of click this link to go to our subscription service to watch the full show. Um, so some people are doing it that way. They're utilizing the two different streaming encoders at the same time. So that's a nice effect. There's a lot of different options. Uh, multilingual services, like I said, for churches, uh, corporate meetings, having to go different places at different times. So you can run one master event and isolate uh, different rooms, different breakout sessions, uh, even in government. Uh, where you've got multiple meetings going on at the same time. You can have a dedicated camera going dedicated to one site separate from the full-on council meeting that's being done. Um, we're seeing that being used a lot here recently in this environment. And then as far as export, you can re export your media after the fact. So once you have your master recording, you can transcode that into various formats uh, for editing purposes or for social media publishing or things like that. You can set that up here under export media. And I heard me back up full screen. You'll see that we do have four mix effect buses. Now these are four MEs. Uh, slightly different than the traditional sense when it comes to MEs, in that our MEs have reentry, which means I can take one ME into another ME. So I can cascade my layers of video. So I don't have priority where ME one can only go into ME two. It's like, no, one, two, three, four can go wherever you want them to. Uh, I have them relabeled just because of various different effects that are going on. So I've got some that are set up as virtual uh, sets, which we do have internal to the box. So I can load up specialized virtual sets in a mix effect. Set my layers. I've got my two keying layers so I can attach lower thirds directly to an ME that's separate from our downstream key. So we do have two downstream keys as well. So you can see we can layer a lot of video layers at the same time on screen. It can get kind of crazy. So that's double, triple boxes. That's uh, various other effects. We have DVE moves, which that's actually how I'm doing uh, all the zooming around the screen. This is all set up as comps. So I can dynamically move images, not just the interface here, but if I'm setting up in a double box look, like this one here, I can then effectively bring on different devices at the same time. And so now you see I've got two layers of video on preview that are coming from different sources. So I have a background image behind, I'm here on set, and with this one image, and then I've got my interface is being sent to a different output. And then I can use my comps to then move things around the screen. So I have these various presets set up. So if I wanna zoom in on the left side, I can have that set up. If I wanna bring back out and show the double box look, and then let's zoom in on the other caller, I can do that dynamically as well. So these are various presets that are assigned and I can trigger on macros. So now I can automate this process. In a virtual set environment, I'll go ahead and bring one of those online. And then you'll be able to see in a virtual set, 
Uh, this one got a little changed because I changed my source. So if I go back here to my green screen, so there's my host. I can play back that video content. Let me go ahead and mute that. So now you can see I've got pre-recorded content that's showing up on set in a virtual environment. She was shot on a green screen. She doesn't really exist. She's just there virtually. But if I go in and populate uh, some video here, and play that on a loop. So now I'll be on the actual monitor. So now when I zoom back out, you'll see this effect. I've got different camera presets already saved in this virtual environment. So now you can see I can zoom back out and here's what it looks like, the entire virtual set. But based on my comp windows, my presets, I can now manage the various angles. I can set duration, I can set the speed. You know, if I just wanna zoom in on the monitor itself, uh, I also have the ability to bring on lower thirds at the same time. So now I have a zoom in with the, and it did not take because I'm doing something different. So now I can add a lower third to that comp as well. So that's on that same shot based on that preset. So you can kind of get the idea of what you can combine together in different elements. So I can zoom back out. I can then get rid of that lower third. Kind of manage it that way. So again, everything can be set up ahead of time. You have pre-produced comps, or you can use a joystick on the control surface and then move things around, set it up that way, the different positioner tools. You've got 16 different presets. So that way you can have your various camera shots. I can rename them as whatever they're going to be and kind of manage them that way. So when we talk about the mixed effects, you see you've got two layers in the cascading effect. So now, instead of DDR2, I can actually bring myself back in on set. So now I can have a host talk to the guest and have them live mixed together as one virtual environment. She is not live. She's a pre-recorded content. I'm live. I'm on screen right now. But you can set up your shows this way. So that way, if you can't be in the studio together, but you can't pre-record content, then you can mix them together and play them back out to where it appears live. So that is a very nice feature um, that we can do inside of our box natively. Now, when it comes to graphics, one other thing that we had talked about is with our live virtual set, I brought that, I showed it, it was the animation. But now when I talk about what's internal to the box itself, we do have live text, which is our own proprietary software for onboard graphics, but we do have a nice feature in our premium access called uh, live graphics. Live graphics is a plugin that you can export content from After Effects into our uh, productions. So when I'm dealing with an After Effects session, so I can create what looks like an animated graphic, but in fact, I'm just playing back an After Effects uh, file <clears throat> inside our TriCaster, so then it gets that animated look to it. And then I can macro that to turn it on, turn it off. But if I go back to my interface and show you what I'm talking about here. So inside our buffer, this is where I've loaded that graphic that I just flew on and flew off. So right now, the key is live because you see it's got the program tally, so it's on air. But the various preset elements that were saved inside the After Effects file now show up as 16 completely different options. So by flying on preset six, that was the lower third that was showing up on screen. And it has a generic feature to it. So if I take it back off, I have the ability, you'll see down here, I've got a little icon that will allow me to edit the text. So right now there's no graphic on air, so you're not seeing it, but it will have a text element that I can have bounding boxes, I can change the name. So in effect, I can create that preset. And then from that preset, that template, if I bring it back on and show you, I can close that, go back into the editor. Now I can change the text. So instead of 
you know, hey, I forgot the middle initial. So I can type live and then update that quickly. So if your guests are coming on late or you're not sure who's speaking or like I said, misspelling or the names or whatever you want to change, you can do that live on air. Well, not live on air, but live inside of a session. And then update it that quickly so it does come on and look right. And we've got various other elements as part of this preset. So here's one with a live bug. I can remove the lower third and then it will show on and over the shoulder shot. Again, things that were done in After Effects that then were saved and rendered out that are now showing up native inside the TriCaster. So it does allow for a lot of higher end look than our regular 2D live text software that's included with the TriCaster. This opens up the opportunity for other people to edit. If they know and love Photoshop, then yes, they can make their own, save it out, and then bring it in uh, natively inside the TriCaster. The other trick is you can do this over NDI. So if you've got a workstation already set up, you can then set your outputs and After Effects and then output as NDI. So then one of your available window sources can then be the alpha channel as a layer. So instead of being loaded in a buffer, I can then assign that to one of my native inputs. So now you can expand your workflow that way. And because you're NDI, you're on a network. So you don't have to be in the same room as your TriCaster. You can be you know, another floor, another building. Depending if you have a VPN set up, you can be across you know, the city, across the state, whatever. So India does allow for a lot of flexibility when you're bringing in graphic content as well. So something else we talked about as far as NDI goes is our NDI camera apps. And I'm running the iPhone app. So if I go and select and change my source from this camera, I can come down and see here's my iPhone and here's my NDI HX camera app. So when I select that, there I am. So now I'm showing up on input eight. So this is actually my iPhone sitting on my desk. So it kind of breaks the fourth wall. You see I'm in my basement, you know, there's my stereo system, things like that, that are down here. I'm using an iPhone now for live video across my own internal Wi-Fi here in my studio. So it's a great way to add additional content to your production without having to spend a whole lot of money extra on cameras. You can run an iPhone app and then bring that into the production. So this is back on me inside the set. And yes, in front of the green screen, I've actually done uh, green screen shows with my iPhone and it's worked out very, very well uh, inside the TriCaster for production. So it's not just our regular new tech cameras, but yes, we've I've pulled it off with an iPhone itself. So we talked about a lot um, workspaces. Here's another one that I wanna talk about is our multi-view capability. So this is the main interface. So from a single one-man band operation, here's what you're looking at, all your sources, your switching, your media content, but we have multi-views. Now these multi-views will allow for additional viewing of independent video sources, of your media playback. You can set this up as full screen video. So if you wanna have a, an on-air confidence monitor right there so you can see what's going on, or if you're set up where your TV is looking at something different than a regular producer operator or camera operator. You can give multi, multiple different looks to uh, people that are either in the control room or in the production environment. So that's where you get different options, uh, different monitor layouts that are capable here. So that's what this is about as far as multi-views go. Um, LED displays, we do have some LED strips that are on the side of the box. You can set those up to uh, color cycle. Those can also be VU meters. So on the side of the chassis, you'll see the, the LEDs flicker, uh, depending on what the view meters look like. Um, some people uh, do color cycles. Uh, the audio as part of the DDRs uh, can show up that way. Um, there's one guy on social media that changed them all red and called it his Spider-Man box. Um, <laughs> you have just some different features there uh, with the LED circles that are around the chassis itself. So that's what those are about. Uh, macros, this is a great way to automate your production switcher. So this was a feature that was brought back to the mini line that uh, a lot of clients were asking for and end users because our macros have been around for quite a while on our higher end products, but they wanted that feature back on the mini line as well. So basic system commands, everything that the TriCaster can do can be automated in a macro environment. A lot of cool ways to handle that 
um, just like what I did earlier from the, the just bringing on that lower third. I can create and edit it. I'm just figuring out what my action is going to be. I set those values. I set that. I can play it back so you can see what it looks like. So I play back the title select. Um, it will then automate. So that was my off one. So I have to come on here to my on macro. And so just by triggering that, that triggered that preset to then bring on my lower third. And then when I go back to off, I click that and run that macro. And then that removes that lower third preset. So that's something simple that can be done. And then you can assign those macros to keys on the, your keyboard, uh, USB devices, things like that, that are connected to the TriCaster. So now you have hot box, box selection. You press a button, it fires the macro. So it's a great way to automate. And you can, you can actually macro other macros. So you can put them in combination of if you want a timed environment where cameras switch at a certain time, you can set that up because there's time plus a value. So now the macros can then automate the production. Take it a step further, we have included on the mini 4K line our live story uh, creator function. So this was something that's included in premium access on our other uh, TriCaster models, but we've included it natively inside the mini 4K. And while uh, the live story creator allows you to do is create, ringing, to create a teleprompter script, and based on the headings that you're typing into a Microsoft Word document, you can now add different effects to it. So as the prompter rolls, it'll trigger your lower third on who's ever speaking based on the text that's being read. You have those different identifiers set up. So as they switch over to the next host, then when Candace is now speaking, that'll trigger her lower third. So as she's reading through it, it'll be timed event. So as this is going on, now it switches back to Tommy. This will also handle camera switching. So as you're reading the teleprompter script, it can bring on your lower thirds. It can switch your camera to sources. It can play back your DDR content, all based on how the script was written and how those macros then were included. So it's an awesome way to automate your entire production based on one teleprompter script. Now you're saying, okay, how am I gonna view this? Well, this is part of the NDI ecosystem. So if I come back up to my sources and I come down here to local, you'll see I've got, actually no, it's, it's down here at the mini. Spoke out of turn, teleprompter. So now teleprompter can now show up as an input back into the box so the TD can follow along. Or I can now route this because it's an NDI device. I can send this teleprompter out one of my available outputs as an NDI to a monitor on set. So now I can use my handy dandy decoders, set that up to then decode that teleprompter signal coming from the TriCaster on the display that's there for the talent. So now I've simplified the production even further by using a small little device that comes with the TriCaster. Now that's my teleprompter, it's already built in. You don't need additional parts and pieces for that. So in a mobile environment where you really gotta take you know, care of how much gear you're really you know, moving around from point A to point B, this is a great simplified option uh, to handle. So yeah, Live Story Creator is very cool in that regard. And not just for news environments, we're seeing this also in houses of worship in this uh, time of COVID where You've got pastors that are doing this for daily devotionals or other types of um, educational series or things like that, where they may not have the ability to have their operator to do uh, their, their normal education shows. They're running things off a teleprompter script, and that's handling the automation for them. Because we have integrations with ProPresenter and uh, a few other uh, worship service uh, software companies, now you're talking about bringing in worship lyrics for uh, service live on screen or Bible verses that can show up and they follow exactly along because they're typed directly into the script. So everything ties in together very, very nicely. So that's a great way to, to use a feature set in a non-traditional environment because we found other avenues to make, the, make it work. Uh, corporate board meetings, corporate presentations, um, all hands meetings, things like that, running off that, that one script. So that can automate other features, switching to other presenters, things like that. So, um, it's had a lot of uses past just regular uh, news environments. 
Uh, the other thing that is included with the Mini 4K is what's called Live Panel. Live Panel is a browser application that's on the same network as the TriCaster. So now I have the ability to view the audio channels. So I can monitor what's going on for my audio from a browser application. These are live response faders. So if you're running this to a touch panel, to a, an iPad, to a, a Microsoft Surface Touch or something like that, you can now have live fader control of your audio sources. So this ties back into having to run things externally in Dante with front of house, they can then manage the internal channels of the track capture as well. They can handle it that way. Uh, something else that's part of live panel is data link. Data link has been around for a little while and it will allow for external content via RSS feeds, scoreboards, voting machines, things like that, that can send out strings of data that our live graphics plugin can now read and then populate live on air. So data link is very cool. So this is a great way to set that up. Uh, media playback. So these are the internal uh, media players of the TriCaster. So you can have this also set up for an operator to run. So they can go between different effects, uh, different video clips. So the TD doesn't have to manage it. You can do it uh, from the browser. Uh, switcher, there is a way to handle basic switching features uh, inside the browser. So now that is browser based. But my favorite is Builder. This is actually how I was running the majority <laughs> of my demo today is using this live panel panel builder feature. So I'm switching camera inputs. I'm taking those to air. I'm bringing on my lower thirds. That's how I was doing the virtual zooms around the interface. It's all because I had these macros pre-built. And then I'm running it just off this panel. I can start and stop a recording. I can start and stop a stream. Uh, I can switch over and actually run the virtual sets because I got a different page that's set up for that. So all those virtual moves and everything I can run from this builder as well. So think about from a training aspect, you may not have all of your operators trained up on the entire working of the TriCaster. You can give this on a iPad or Microsoft Surface or whatever. Now they have full touch control. And this is all they need to know how to do is switch a few inputs, take it to air, start and stop the stream, start and stop the recording. It's a very simple house of worship primary example for volunteers that are coming in to run Sunday shows. They may only be there once a month, you know, once every few weeks to actually run the production. This is a great way. It's on a browser app. So again, they're sitting in front of an iPad. That's all they're doing is switching those buttons. They're not, they're completely, you know, isolated from what's going on on the actual interface itself. So that's very, very cool. Uh, the other aspects that we have uh, as part of our NDI tools is KBM. So as you saw earlier, I'm not sitting at the TriCaster at all. The TriCaster is over here on the other side of the room. So from this camera spot, that's where my mini is situated right now. If I were to spin this camera around, you'll see that I'm back here at my desk running everything off my laptop. And that's because I'm using the NDI KVM feature inside NDI Studio Monitor. So this runs on Windows machines only that I have KVM control. So that's keyboard, video and mouse control of the TriCaster on the same network just by running NDI Studio Monitor. So that is a very, very cool way uh, to control your show, especially in this environment where you can't be in the same room or even same building as the TriCaster. So I can sit here remotely, uh, even through a VPN client or even a cloud-based service, I can then pass control over uh, to other people and handle it that way. So. I'm pretty much at my speaking time. Uh, again, you know, like Jim said before, I can go on more and more, but if you guys got questions, uh, now would be the great time to talk about it. Um, so I don't use up all my time. <laughs> Just talking about- That's absolutely amazing, Jeremy. Talk about features, that's that's incredible. What a, what a great unit. Um, so yes, we do have some questions here for you. Awesome. Um, so this one comes from Kenny. Uh, Kenny's actually got a couple. Uh, are you able to use 4K monitor for the interface or only full HD? You can use the 4K monitor for the interface, but it's at that point you're scaling, and so it does look kind of tiny. Um, so for the interface, I still recommend regular 1080 because you want to see more of the interface and how you're going to control the show. 
and leave the 4K monitors just for full screen video applications. He also asked, uh, the four ports, are they PoE or PoE plus? So that is, it's PoE plus, but you're based on the power budget. So the budget of the card itself kind of dictates what you can plug into it. So that's why we can say we can plug in cameras, but it, that's where it gets a little bit tricky because you got to play the math game. How many devices am I plugging in at one given time? So like my UHD camera, that is a, a full uh, PoE plus camera. I can plug that straight into the TriCaster 4K and the Mini 4K and control the camera. But I'm going to sacrifice a lot of the rest of that power for any additional devices. So it's you got to play the math game on your PoE budget. Got it. It's not uh, grouped across the entire card. Questions, a couple of questions from Bruce. Actually, I'm going to combine this all into one bigger question. Uh, you had mentioned that you can stream to different uh, locations. Mm -hmm. He said, is there a limit to the number of streams you can go live to? In other words, can you go live, uh, again, based on YouTube versus Facebook? How, is there a limit to any of that? This many YouTube, this many Facebook, or overall? That's dependent on your pipe to the outside world. Uh, what I can comfortably say is, yes, you should be able to stream to two at a time. Um, I've gotten more out of it just because at one location I had access to a much bigger pipe and I was just able to get away with it. But safely, yes, one stream per, um, because if you add more to it, then you're adding, you're taxing more on the public internet side of your router. So if you don't have the necessary bandwidth and you're going to see performance issues, that's also why we have the ability to adjust that bit rate setting on those encoders. So if you are noticing that you're getting, you're having some streaming issues, you can dial down that bit rate setting on those encoders, and then that'll save your pipe and then possibly get you the ability to get a third channel out. Okay, uh, questions from Philip here. Will there ever be an NDI app for the Android? It's <laughs> been asked a lot. Um, I know our guys are working on it. Um, that's all I can say is it's been asked for it a lot, and I know engineering has been working. That's all I can say. Okay. Another question from Philip here. Will the, will output of MP4 to USB 3 drives work? In the past, he said he's, he's got a slow drive warnings, even though the bandwidth of the MP4 is well below the USB capabilities. So that's a tricky topic just because every USB drive is different. You're also dealing with shared bus speed. That's the, the gotcha across all of this. So if you've got a passive USB drive and you're trying to record live video to it, it's not a constant read write speed over USB. It's theoretical data transfer limit. Um, so it's hit or miss. So if you're gonna record natively to a USB drive, I always recommend a powered drive because that drive is also pulling power off that same port. So a powered USB 3 drive or USB C drive will be more stable. Um, and also just make sure that there's it's not a, uh, a green drive where it's it's using the eco-friendly, where it's saving as much power as possible. Um, you wanna make sure it's it's full throttle all the way. And we've had a lot of success with a lot of different manufacturers of USB drives. Um, so it's one of those things where it's either test or you know talk to us at New Tech directly on the, on the workflow and the specific parts and pieces. Uh, let's see, we got another question here from Eric, and I think you may have touched on this, but let's maybe, uh, you can touch on it one more time. Can you, uh, if, if, if you have mixed formats, you have 4K, HD, does the, the TriCaster Mini internally uh, scale those? Yeah, and that's part of the NDI protocol itself, because we're completely agnostic on NDI as far as resolution, frame rate, all that kind of fun stuff. But the TriCaster per input, yes, has frame syncs built in so that can mix and match in those various flavors. So you can so come up, in at up, up case, down, any way. Right. And it's also matters with your session that you started in. The session that I was I started in was a 1080p 60. On my output side, I can down convert. That's something I didn't really show off, is I can down convert my outputs. I can't go up, I can always go down. So if I'm in a 1080p 60. I can down convert to 720 and send out a 720 signal if necessary. Um, the same is true with 4K. Now, the other thing I didn't talk about in the 4K is right now in 1080, I have two mix outs, or actually four mix outs. If I go to 4K, I have one. 
So in 4K, I have one mix output. In 1080, I have four. So uh, uh, another question here. You have the green screen. I'm sorry, green screen capabilities. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a, a chroma keyer that could be different colors? I know it's an odd question, but can you? Oh yeah, this is uh, this has been part of my favorite aspect of TriCasters for many many years. Is the color picker option and the chroma keyer setup can be whatever color you want it to be. You just make it make sure it's lit correctly. I've actually done it on a mustard yellow school brick wall and keyed it, and it looked great just because we lit it right the first time. Just don't um, wear a mustard yellow T-shirt. or Right, exactly. So follow the regular rules. Don't wear the same color you're standing in front of. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so it doesn't really have to be true green. Uh, even in the environment that I'm in right now, yes, I have a green environment, but I've got some rather inexpensive lights that I got off Amazon. So to light this correctly, then use the color picture picker option to then find the most color saturated area of the background and restart that algorithm. So a lot of it is in software, and then you can tweak accordingly. But yeah, you can play with, and we also have a luminous keyer as well. So we got a lot of different ways you can key sources um, that are on screen. Lighting that is absolutely, you have to have that right. Otherwise you're gonna get that that ghosting or the uh, it, it not pulling the whole background properly. Yeah, our, alg our algorithm is very, very good, but still, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta light, you gotta have some depth. You know, I, I have got about, uh, about not quite two feet um, between my chair and the screen behind me. So, uh, question from Tom: Are there, are the Spark Plus the only available uh, HDMI to NDI converters? Uh, from New Tech, this is what we include in our kit, but NDI is NDI. If your manufacturer speaks NDI and you've got a relationship with them that you have used forever, as long as they're outputting NDI, then yes, it can be seen inside the TriCaster. Here's an interesting question. I never even thought of this one myself. How many users can be logged in to the TriCaster at once? Uh, from a live panel option? Um, I've, <laughs> that depends. I think that's what the question is asking, yeah. Yeah, um, because it's browser-based. Um, I don't know what the limit would be. Uh, I can imagine there will be a limit. Um, but it depends on what you're looking at. So if one person is logged in looking at the audio side and someone else is logged in via live panel and looking at the media player side, they're not going to step on each other. So it all depends on what the function and feature is. But with KVM, most definitely, it's one-to-one. -one. So you, you know, server can't have more than two masters. So if I'm logged in with KVM from my laptop and then someone else is logged in too, then it will have a conflict. But from a live panel, from the browser side of it, no, they don't step on each other that way. Okay. Um, what would be, if there is any, what would be the benefits of the mini 4K over something like the TC410 Plus? Uh, the big one is 4K. T the 410 Plus cannot do 4K. It tops out at 1080p60. Um, the mini, at the size, the, the feature sets, um, because we've got aspects of premium access that are included on the mini 4K that have to be paid additional on the 410, like live panel, um, like uh, live story creator, uh, those things that are included in the mini 4K are an additional upcharge on the 410 plus. Uh, this is from Luis. He asked the question about how many people being logged in again. If, and I, I would, in my mind, I'm likening this to like driver's education. If you got yeah. one person driving, can another person override what that other person is doing? If it's a keyboard mouse solution, yes, it will override because we're only talking about one keyboard, one mouse per system. But if you're talking about, like I said, features inside live panel where you're dealing with macros or things like that, then it doesn't necessarily override because it's a different command structure. So if I'm using live panel to fire off macros to switch cameras while someone else is doing keyboard and mouse and controlling graphics, they're not going to interfere because it's two completely separate operations. Okay. And it looks like that is it for our questions. Uh, Jeremy, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a pleasure and it's been a lot of information. Um, it's great yeah, to see cool. thing in, in, in live action. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for sure. So. And being done uh, remotely is the other key thing is doing it from my laptop, not from the TriCaster itself, because a lot of people are doing this now. I also want to say our New Tech University classes are up on the, on the website now. 
so people can go through and get more training on individual aspects of new tech products, features, NDI. We have a course specifically for that. So that's at uh, New Tech U. And then we've got demos and videos at newtech.tv. Um, so if you want more information, that's definitely a way to hit us up there too. Excellent. Um, so I, th I think with that, Jeremy, we're going to wrap wrap things up here. Um, thank you to everybody for attending. We've had we had a good crowd today. Great questions, a lot of information, like I had mentioned. Uh, just real quick, if you have any further questions, or if you're watching this in the future, uh, recorded on YouTube, and you want to, you can email me some questions for sure. My email address is jripp at fullcompass.com. Uh, feel free to shoot those to me. If I need to bring in Jeremy, I absolutely will. We also have Eric Higgs as our in-house video expert. Um, and I have several other resources to answer that. But uh, one more time, thank you so much, Jeremy. And everybody, uh, don't forget to fill out the, the little short survey that we have at the end. Thanks, Jeremy. All right. Thanks, Jim. All right. This will end our session for today. We'll see you on the next.